YouTube and we're cutting another Doctor Who Big Finish review. Today I'm cutting my look at the Doctor Who monthly range of this month's release, The Two Masters, which is sort of the final episode of the current Master Trilogy, which I've been very excited for. So far I've reviewed And Will Obey Me and Vampires of the Mind. I will leave the links in the description of things for those reviews. And I've also reviewed Jago Lightfoot Series 11 as well, which sort of faded into um, the series slightly as well. So yeah, so far, in case you've not seen the other reviews of And Will Obey Me and Vampires of the Mind, it's been a pretty good trilogy, I'm not going to lie, it's been a really good one. Um, something a lot different, much like it's not just bringing the master back, there's been a different plot behind there. And this one is the final summarising a story which I've been wanting to listen to since Vampires of the Mind and I'm glad that it's finally here. So before I start, as always, I'll leave in the description below the link to go and buy this on the Big Finish website. It is out now and it's $14.99 as well as $12.99 for the standard digital download if you just want that version. And if you're somebody who likes to buy them in shops, I do believe it gets released at the end of the month, but there is probably a chance that it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So Big Finish is probably your best bet for this release. So this episode sees the return of Alex McQueen and Jeffrey Beavers at the same time for The Two Masters, which I'm surprised. 50 years of Doctor Who and we've not once had a master story with two masters in I don't quite understand why the TV show hasn't done that, how the hell has it took this long. The episode also sees the return of the 7th Doctor, Sylvester McCoy, which quite frankly um, is not going to be the first time because we are not going to get rid of him now until like probably October, September time because the next issues of the monthly range, I do believe the next three, are sort of the 7th Doctor part of the monthly range as we do sort of have, we've just finished the 5th Doctor one, then we have the Master Trilogy and now we have this, which um, the 7th Doctor one coming up. So yeah, we do get a lot of Sylvester coming up, which is a great thing to see, as well as the classic Doctor's new Monsters box set coming out, I do believe, in this month. I don't know, June or is it July? I can't remember. Down to the actual episode now, I loved it. I think that this episode definitely needs more context. Unlike the other ones of Vampires of Mind and Annie Will Obey Me, you could have got away with buying them without having the other stories in there. But I will say to have the full expectations of this one and to sort of enjoy it most thoroughly, you do sort of need the context of the other stories as, as presumed it is the final episode of the trilogy. Therefore, it does sort of tweak them together and it is based around the Masters. Unlike the other ones, we did have, say, Vampires of the Mind, we had a big plot behind that of having the mind thing and the amnesia thing and all of that um, with the Sixth Doctor. And yeah, there was quite a lot of padding in there and there was a different plot going on and um, there was just sort of the coincidence of the Master being involved. But there was actually a story going on at that time. The Two Masters doesn't really have that. It is a full-on Master-based story. We don't have any other plots going on. We don't really have any other villains other than the Gorlan, which are sort of in it probably for a running time of about 15 minutes throughout the whole of the story and to be quite honest and um, yet yeah, it's not really much of a plot that actually it's much to the plot at all really so it's literally a master story and that is literally the main thing of it this episode is quite a timey-wimey one although i don't really like to use that phrase it is a little bit all over the place in parts it does actually start with the opening to episode three and we sort of forget about that and we revisit it near the end of the story and yeah this is definitely one that you cannot sort of put on and then go off and do something and listen to it in the background it is definitely one of those ones if you are experienced with the monthly range you will know it is a lot more thought out a lot more complex than say the box sets such as doom coalition because those are sometimes quite a straightforward plot but with two hours worth of the monthly range there, there is a longer time to use and therefore allows for a lot more of a complex character story this is one of them it is very confusing in parts you have lots of regeneration ideas it is a regeneration based theory story in the last episode we had alex mcqueen actually regenerating which even though he's been in dark eyes we didn't actually see his regeneration but in this story I do believe we've sort of had a flashback technically to the present so the last episode was technically a flashback to this one but that will be a flash forward I don't know it's a little bit confusing but yeah we did actually have the regeneration in there which I did really like and I love the way that the master actually went against himself for a while even though beavers could sort of understand how he was doing it and things like that. So he could sort of understand his own self going against him in order to aid his future. Throughout this review, I am going to relate to the Masters as probably McQueen and Beavers because it's just a lot easier than Master whatever number because to be quite honest, I don't know the incarnations of Master. It does get a little bit confusing in parts. Yeah, I will refer to them as the actual actor names, no doubt. So the opening of the story actually starts with a plot that you do feel that, oh, this is going to be where we set the whole of the story. We do, in fact, have a scene where um, the Doctor lands on this ship and he doesn't really know what's going on the TARDIS has been drawn in from some energy and yeah he bumps into the rocket men the rocket men are basically these sort of intergalactic criminals they're quite well known they're not really aware of who the doctor is to an extent and then um, yeah it's a nice little sort of story arc to start with but um, throughout the first episode I will spoil it for you they do all die pretty much in part one except Jemima and the seventh doctor does in fact take on Jemima as a companion which um I find quite interesting although it's not a companion that we ex 
expect. And yeah, I will sort of interrupt now and say, if you do not want spoilers for this release, get off the review, please, because I'm just going to ruin this story for you. But yeah, um, I will give you a chance now. Basically, Jemima dies, like, sort of halfway through the story. The Master kills her, McQueen, and shoots her down. And, uh, yeah, I love that, because once again, we have a threat in there. Of course, she's not really a companion yet, because she's just came aboard the TARDIS. But, yeah, I did quite like her in it. Um, I think that she worked quite well. She was quite upbeat, and basically, she was took on by the Rocket Men and sort of kept, and she was sort of forced to be with them, and then she sort of adapted to life with them. And, yeah, um, she wants a chance to escape, and that's what the Seventh Doctor gives her. And I think um, the one thing that did shock me was the Seventh Doctor's quick... And um, sort of noticing that she's there, and I think he even says at one point, oh, she'll do, and then brings her onto the TARDIS, which um, it sort of makes it think that she is actually, he's actually looking for a companion. One thing that I did notice throughout the story, and it is sort of referenced on the cover art as well, and I do believe by the um, special effects and things that are used, the TARDIS in this story is in fact the movie TARDIS, the Paul McGann one, that um, of course the Seventh Doctor did have at the very beginning of Doctor Who the movie, and we don't quite know how long he had that TARDIS for. And yeah, this is actually an episode that takes place quite late on in the Seventh Doctor run. To the extent of things, I don't actually quite know how far they've gone with the Seventh Doctor, to be honest. I don't know how, um, I don't know if they'd really took it on after survival, I did try to ask a few people behind it, but I don't actually think that they have, which I think that that is actually quite an interesting thing, because we've had a lot of Colin after his era got axed, and um, yeah, I'm quite surprised that we've not had sort of the adventures continuing on from after survival. I do believe it's probably been referenced at some point, as in um, Ace, John and Galfrey and things, um, but yeah, this is actually an episode featuring at the very end, near enough, of the Seventh Doctor's run. It's not quite inferred, but you can sort of guess that it is near the end, one, because of the artwork on the cover, it's him with the very long hair, but also because throughout the story we have many references to the TARDIS and then um, the two masters being on it and then um, we have special effects and things that actually relate to the movie TARDIS so yeah it's nice to see an episode with him with that TARDIS even though I don't associate that TARDIS with this doctor. Got to the point with the masters now Jeffrey Beavers and McQueen are possibly two of my favourite masters before ironically of course McQueen has never been on the show he's never been a televised master and he is actually I do believe the only untelevised master and um, he's so good honestly in the last review I was complimenting him so much with Colin and I can't wait to listen to him in Dark Eyes 3 and 4 and um, seriously he is such a brilliant master I think that he is the mix of and um, I think he's a bit like Missy in a way as much as I think that a female master would have been approached a few years ago as no I do like Michelle Gomez as the master I think that she has a brilliant quite psychotic feel about her and then in this we do have a bit of that in there of course McQueen came first but I can sort of see a bit of sort of linking in there of the two masters I think that if there was a male version version of the Michelle Gomez master it will be something very like McQueen because he does many jokes he's very comedic but also very very serious at the same time and his voice and his presence is just brilliant and he is he's a brilliant master of course he's merely with Paul McGann but I think that he's adapted to Colin Baker and Sylvester McCoy so well and the same vice versa with Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker I think that they've worked with him so well so and honestly I want to see more of him in the future because I love McQueen as the master Beavers, of course, that he's been in the annual Obey Me review as well as Jago and Lightfoot. He was in Jago and Lightfoot quite a lot and I really enjoyed his master in it. If you actually watch that review, you'll probably remember me saying of how the master actually adapted to society and um, he was a part of it and he sort of lurked around the Victorian London setting, which was just phenomenal. I love the writing for that. If you've not seen my Jago and Lightfoot reviews, I recommend checking them out and I recommend checking Jago and Lightfoot out as well because it is such a brilliant spin-off. I arguably like it more than the actual Doctor Who um, audios. Beavers in this story, he was he was stunning. I part of the story he did in fact play the McQueen Master, sort of in different personality, and that worked so well. Honestly, we got a bit more of a depth into his sort of Beavers as the Master. Um, I love it because you do feel sympathy for him because of the way that he is um, in the corpse of a body that he references at several points in the actual pain that he goes through. But his voice is just the masters on big finish is i've not listened to one master yet where the voice is disappointing i think that both beavers and mcqueen have such brilliant voices and seriously both of them work so well together and i think that if we have any point in the future maybe do i dare say michelle gomez meets John Sim at some point and have a two masters story in the actual series although that I feel that once Peter Capaldi leaves Michelle Gomez I'll probably leave with him because I think that those two sort of correspond with each other pretty well so yeah 
Um, I'm looking forward to that if it does ever happen. But a Two Masters story, I'm literally so confused why that's not happened already. The story itself is a rather complex one. I would say that it's probably the most complex out of the three. And You Will Obey Me was quite a complex one throughout the middle and it did sort of lose it in places. Vampires the Mind is quite a nice simple one. I did actually comment on that review of how it sort of spoon fed you to start with and that worked very, very well. With this one, it is, um, I would sort of say, the sort of standard monthly range formula. It is actually quite confusing, much like things like the Peter Lou Massacre and definitely like Aquatine that I reviewed at the very start of the year. It does get rather complex in plots. It is very timey-wimey in parts and it is a little bit all over the place. It needs to tie all the loose ends together from the previous stories, which as I said, I'll reference at several points. I do have many little references to how the Doctor cannot remember his time with McQueen and the Sixth Doctor Year and Seven can't remember that. McQueen can't remember certain parts as well and Beavers can't remember certain things. We have a reference near the very beginning with the Seventh Doctor, Jemima and and um, the master on the TARDIS and Demi um, says he references about his children in And You Will Obey Me which of course if you've seen that review or the actual episode you will of course know about that and I love those little references in there um, I would suggest it's he probably came from that quite recently and um, yeah it works very well seriously it is a great LinkedIn story and then with McQueen as well I think that the plot interlocks with Vampires of the Mind we have of course that regeneration scene that's used really too many links to Vampires of the Mind just and the way that at the very end of the story which I don't believe I actually referenced in the review but basically one of the boatmen in Vampires of the Mind was one of the master's sort of walking watchers who looked over and notified um, the TARDIS and then um, he put this little tracker on the TARDIS so McQueen could track it down and then um, yeah just a few little references but it doesn't really reference too much to Vampires of the Mind it's more annual obey me really because that sort of set the premise of the stories but yeah it's definitely one of those ones I do believe that if you sort of listen I think part three is where it gets a little bit confusing we have the idea of regeneration and it goes on all over the place you have and McQueen going back in time to sort of stop his past self he basically tricks the beavers master into coming and saying that he has information about the description of the time lords and then beavers then follows him and then of course it's a trap and he burns beavers and um, in order to get the energy and kill his or near death and um, his past self in order to aid his future and um, with this sort of group of people which i'll be coming on to in a little bit but yeah and um, it is a very regeneration one it is all over the place in parts I and mean, as i said part three i in fact listened to part one then part two and i listened to part three was rather confused then the day later i went back listened to part three again it made much more sense after then and then part four is definitely one of those ones that you need a lot of interest for and if that does sort of put you off a little bit it may do um but yeah it is one of those quite heavy-handed scripted ones and then we have the heretic which is sort of like a group of people who basically want the universe which um yeah it does sound a little bit stereotypical or another one of uh, the ones that want the universe and the idea of the two masters being in the same timeline and being in the same bodies which is something that i've not came to yet but yeah basically they use this thing and it's something that i've not came to yet they essentially swap bodies beavers and mcqueen swap bodies and um, in order to create revenge beavers keeps the mcqueen master in the burning corpse and it is just a brilliant idea and that the heretic are a good idea i think that was a little bit confused to start with with their ideas especially as they were in episode one they were essentially the first scene they actually hear for the story before even the title sequence kicks off is a bit about the heretic which is in fact a scene used from part three to introduce the story in and yeah their plot idea is very good they turn against the master eventually and um yeah it's an interesting one i think that i guess i could sort of lie and say and um, the start of the review i did say it's very master based but i guess it isn't really because you have the heretic in there as well but they don't really take much of a center stage it's more of the master based stuff and um yeah i like them i think that it worked well and the idea of the cage and the changing the bodies is brilliant are two masters together and then to mess around the incarnations and things like that and then sort of because they're in the different bodies lead to pretty much the meltdown of the universe and at the very end of the story after um the end of part three i would say is it the end of part three or part two i think it's part two at the end of part two basically um the ship blows up that the um doctor is on and we don't hear about him for that long and um, then at the very end of part four he comes back again so essentially we have and um, the master and the master working together i think that within about 10 minutes mcqueen regretted being the only one in the universe along with the beavers master because they were just going against each other all the time and having little arguments and petty little squabbles it was brilliant the way that they did it and once again something i could imagine the doctor doing as well if at the very end we had and um, the doctor coming back and he even says stuff like hello boys i'm back did you miss me and um yeah we have this very nice sort of send-off to the story curving out all of the plot 
plot. It is amazing. And um, yeah, we have all the plot fixed up. We have um, the masters sent back to their times. I do believe, I can't remember where one of the masters came from. I think he even said, um, and you can be sent back to wherever you came from to leave sort of the plot open. And yeah, the other master got sent back to somewhere else. And um, yeah, it worked well. And then at the very end of the story, and um, the sent doctor was there by himself at the end of the universe. And the only thing left was him and the cage. And the cage is this life-making machine. So what did he do after the master in part one killed Jemima? He brought back Jemima at the very end of the story and I loved that because I thought that once again it wasn't a cop out. I was happy to see her back. Um, he saved her and uh, brought her back to life and the very ending of the story is her waking up in her home and um, her mum shouting her from the stairs or something and she goes in a minute mum and then she goes downstairs and that's the very end of the story. And it sort of felt a little bit like the one thing that reminded me of is something that I guess um, is a bad thing so it shouldn't really remind me of it but it sort of reminded me in a way a little bit of foreshadowing of Adam in the long game of when he went back home even though that Adam was a really bad character in series one but sort of reminded me of that the very ending of the story and I don't know if they're ever going to sort of capture up on Jemima again I don't know if she's an important part of anything like in past to big finish or if she maybe might even come back in the future but yeah I enjoyed her in it and I like the way that they saved her at the end I thought it was a very nice summarizing thing to the story and overall it worked very well of course this series has based of episodes written by Alan Barnes, John Dorney and Justin Richards which I do believe that they're all big finish regulars and um, yeah they bounce their ideas off each other really well and I'm guessing that there must have been somebody like Nick Briggs to um, sort of oversee I'm guessing he would have been the script editor for it and um, he would have overseen the plot and sort of put it together but the thing I must credit all three writers on there are all three independent writers all three independent stories overarching with a plot of course it is it is essentially an arc much like how the new series would have it is a series arc but I came out of the three stories, technically four, if you include Jago and Lightfoot, um, which you could technically put in there as well as you wanted to steal the Doctor's incarnations. Um, I must credit them for, they've wrapped it up well. It's literally the end. I don't feel like I've listened to these three technically four stories. And I don't feel that I've been cheated. I don't feel like there is plot left unexplained. I don't, left the, I don't feel like there is massive parts in the plot that are missing and I feel like I've came out of a story it wasn't a cop out it worked very well and it's a whole three and four story and I, there we go that is how to do a story arc which I can't stress enough it's like Big Finish can manage it, three separate writers, you may think all oh, separate different writers won't be able to manage a story arc because they clearly can't in new series Doctor Who and um, they clearly can't even just manage characters. I think that the 12th Doctor had about 12 different personas throughout his first series just because the writers didn't know how to act with him because they've essentially not seen any of his stories before because Moffat didn't give them a briefing into how is that his Doctor actually was. They probably had the Christmas special to go off and that was it. With this, we have quite clearly some structure. We, I could imagine all three of these writers coming around together and actually summarising what this plot is going to be. And I feel that that's delivered. And once again, it proves Big Finish have thought this out. All three stories have independent plots. All three of them work very well. And it works. So why, Big Finish, are you brilliant? And why is the new series struggling to create just a simple plot arc that actually works and then creates disasters such as Hellbent, which literally make more questions that we even started with? Why? Overall, this release, I like it. I think that, honestly, it's probably one of the strongest monthly range ones for this year. I think that so far it would have to be this one, um, Vampires of the Mind, and probably the Peterly Massacre, which are my current favourites for this year. I think that all three of them are very strong stories. And um, yeah, this one especially, even though you may be put off by the context, which I wouldn't blame you for, I would definitely say this is not one to start your big finish collection on at all. But yeah, you, you will probably still enjoy it if you don't have the context of the other stories, but I just would recommend buying the other two first, hearing about them, listening to them, or at least going into them with the context of what happened in the other stories, and then you will enjoy it a lot more. But yeah, I will warn you of that, but generally overall, another strong story, and looking forward to what happens next with The Life of Crime, which I've listened to the trailer, and it sounds very time heist-ish, but actually done right probably but yeah very exciting that one looking so as i said at the start of the review i'll leave in the description below the link to go and buy this release on the big finish website it's out now and it's 14.99 and it's got alex mcqueen in and sylvester mccoy so go and buy it it's very good yeah that's that i hope you enjoyed this video if you have please do give it a big like please subscribe if you're not already if you any questions please do leave them below and i'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future thanks again for watching i shall see you all next time so thanks for watching and bye for now